You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby. Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. All right. Well, volatility, volatility, volatility. At this point in time, there's a lot of volatility in the marketplace. Uh, We had another ginormous down day in the S&P 500 index. And before I get too far, I should let you know that we are taping Options Playbook Radio on Wednesday, March 18th. The markets are closed. The S&P 500 index uh, closed down 131 points, or 5%. Uh, The Dow was down a little bit more. It was down 6%, but nowhere near its lows on the day. It had a similar reaction to what it has had recently, where we've seen uh, the Dow and the SPX be down a lot in in the morning session and then rally into the close. That seems to be a theme. But of course, as soon as you depend on that, it will not no longer be a theme anymore. Uh, what to do in the markets? Who knows? Uh, the, the VIX index uh, at this point in time has not seen these levels since the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, we came very close to hitting a high the other day. So today in the VIX index, once again, we flirted with the all-time high. Well, I should say the high from 2009. Uh, they used to calculate the VIX a little bit differently, so it's kind of hard to tell what the all-time high is, I guess. But uh, the high in 2009, according to my chart, was 89. Today, we got up to 85.47. Uh, we closed at 76.45. So we have a lot of volatility in the marketplace. And in my mind, once the VIX broke through the 50 level, and I talked a little bit about this last week. There, I, I really don't want to try to guess where the VIX is going to go next. I think that that 50 level was a sign of, of capitulation, of a dead cat bounce, of, of resistance to the upside on the volatility, on the fear index, if you will. And the last time around, actually, uh, we mentioned this on my stock play of the day, which myself and Lindsay Bell, both from Ally, do on our YouTube channel. We talked about the fact that We had a big event uh, where the stock market, the S&P 500 index, broke through the October lows. And at the same time, we had the VIX break through 50 to the upside. And that, to me, meant there was no holds bar as to what could happen next. We're trading in the 2008-2009 levels. 
Uh, so you should definitely approach it as just as much uncertainty that was in the marketplace back then. We have now. It's a totally different environment as to what's going on. But with that being said, there's just as much uncertainty in the marketplace. So last week, we talked about long straddles. And I kind of highlighted the VIX last week saying that the volatility is still crazy. And we picked an inexpensive underlying to look at doing a long straddle on. Talked about crude oil, about all the news on crude oil. And the fact that the marketplace wasn't actually looking for that big of a move, considering the move that oil had already made. We looked at doing a long straddle. We were going out 15 days. Stock was right at 650 in the USO and the long straddle was trading for a dollar 25. Um, so in that instance, when you consider the market came down a hundred percent trading from up around the 12 handle all the way down to the six handle, you knew that th there's some type, there's a possibility that this thing could really move. Uh, the six dollar price actually kept the price of the options down. We only paid a dollar 25 for that long straddle and, and the market today did move down. So right now, now I'm currently looking at the USO and we see that the USO is trading at 471 on the close today, uh, down exactly $1 or about uh, 17%. So I don't know exactly how much of a fluctuation it had, but today was the big down day since we taped Options Playbook Radio last week. And if you paid a dollar 25 for that straddle, obviously you are up on this position. And this is one of the great things about a straddle is that if you, if you are correct in one direction, that leaves you with another option contract. So it, going into the close today, I would have thought about closing it if I was trading it. I would have just said, okay, we had a big down day, uh, uh, almost 20% drop in the underlying stock. I'm going to sell the put. I currently show the put is trading 170 by $2. So you've almost doubled your money on this trade. You're up $0.75 cents on a $1.25 trade, uh, depending on where you could get out, of course. Uh, that's that's here and there. That's one of the tough things about trading in a volatile marketplace, too, is that the bid-ass spreads get a little bit wide. But in general, I'd think about getting out of the trade. And then you still, we have a March 27th expiration, so we still have another week to go until that expiration date. So who knows? Maybe you get a bounce back up on the call side and you can make a dollar or two on that, on that side. So uh, interesting short-term trade based off of oil. Everybody Nobody really knew what the news was going to be. Everything was kind of shaking out. We've got the markets that are kind of going crazy. And sometimes you can look at things and say, gee, I just don't think the, the volatility in the options is high enough. And that's basically the case. Now, on Options Playbook Radio, we're never looking to uh, give advice. We're just trying to learn. And so this, to me, was an over-under bet. Do you think this, the market could move a dollar twenty-five? Yes, I do. Do I think it's going to go up? Do I think it's going to go down? I have no idea which direction it would go. That's why we did a long straddle. And in two thousand and eight, guess what? People that did long straddles did very well in two thousand and eight because they once again didn't put enough juice into the option contracts. And that's kind of odd to say, but with the VIX trading at seventy-five right now. But in general, the market has been more volatile than less volatile. And I'm going to go all the way back to all the different episodes on Options Playbook Radio where we talked about a rinse and repeat strategy in Boeing and the fact that Boeing uh, was definitely not pricing their option contracts relative to the volatility in the underlying. Now, nobody in their right mind could have seen what's happening happening right now with Boeing in that uh, the whole travel industry, airline industry, everybody is just getting crushed uh, by the coronavirus overall. And if you were happen to be long a straddle in Boeing, you did extremely well. Just overall, I don't think any of the trades that we looked at in Boeing didn't make more than the expected move on any of the of the instances. And once again, the planes still haven't flown. That's the scary thing here is that we're talking about all this. And the big news is that they're going to release the Boeing Max 757 and they're going to let it fly again. Be free, sail, soar, do whatever. That, nobody's even talking about that at this stage of the game. And that's still the major underlying theme that drove Boeing down. Now today, it actually closed fairly close to 100. It's still down again. 
Uh, so Boeing, one of the great manufacturers in the U.S., is having some problems. Uh, obviously, long straddles would have been good whenever you did them in, the, in Boeing. Ever since that plane has crashed, the long straddle has been an interesting trade in Boeing. So with that said, we talked a lot about that scenario where I would prefer to be on the volatility uh, on all of these underlines. I'd rather be with the volatility being higher than lower and continuing uh, in the short term as opposed to the long term. Uh, USO is down again today, uh, being at uh, 471. You could still rinse and repeat the strategy if you wanted to, but in theory right now, you should have been out of your put and just being long your call option. Now, if you want to wait and go overnight, my biggest thing on all of these stocks, anything that you're trading is if I can take risk off before the close, my biggest worry and concern are the gap opening prices on any underlying. I, d I don't care what stock you're trading. You're trading consolidated lint that trades once a month by appointment. I'm still scared about the gap opening potential on any type of options traded strategy that I have just because you just can't trade. You just can't get out of it. Okay. So either – uh, on the USO, if I didn't close it out, I would wait. I would let it trade almost all day long. Uh, obviously, if, if it's going against you, you can get out of the position anytime you want. But if, you're, if you've got a winner going, I'd let it ride into the close, and then I would just close out uh, as the market close approaches. So those just good timing to get out of the markets. And a lot of times you'll see in extremely volatile markets – that you'll get better fills closer to the close. Why? Because the market makers know the exact same thing that we know. We know <laughs> that they don't want to be in position. So if there is a trade out there that could help them take off risk, market makers would prefer to trade with you and have the benefit of the of buying on the bid and selling on the ask. So you're going to get better fills on the close just in general if you think about the concept. They're closing positions just because because the exact same reason why we're closing positions, because we do not want to be in that marketplace uh, for that open overall, especially in the options arena. Okay, so we've talked about long straddles, one, one over the USO trade. Now, I've had a lot of people that are coming out and saying, look at the premium in all of the stocks. Let's talk about the FANG stocks in general, in Apple, in Google, in Amazon, in Microsoft, in Facebook. All these different stocks have a lot of premium in it, and a lot of people own some of those stocks. So today, we're going to highlight this as the battle between selling cash-secured puts and selling covered calls. And the way I look at it, what I've mentioned already from the long straddle would make me lean towards not selling covered calls overall. And a lot of people have a tendency to go there because they just want to stop the bleeding. And with the markets now being close to the lows since the, the big uh, fallout happened in the, in the coronavirus and all the circuit breakers have been hit time and time again, so because of that, people look at that premium and they say, oh, I have 100 shares of Apple. I bought it at 300. It's now 250. I would like to sell some calls against that position to try to generate capital to try to help offset my losses. And to me, this is the time when I do not want to be selling calls. Why? Because you're capping your upside. This is when it's an extreme where a lot of people are hoping for a V-shaped recovery where the market goes down, hits the bottom, and goes straight back up. And lo and behold, before you know it, you're right back where you started in the S&P 500 index. And if that's the case, uh, selling calls on positions that you've lost money on because you see high volatility is not a good place to be. Reason why? I don't mind it. Like, granted, uh, if we would have had this conversation a week ago, we would have been wrong. Why? Because the markets were way down, volatility was way up, and guess what? They've continued down lower. So it would have been a good thing overall if you would have sold the covered calls. But 
I'm scared of selling covered calls on a lot of those positions because of the whiplash, because of the potential if the market starts coming back and you do not close out that call option and then you get pegged on your stock and you're forced to sell it at a losing price because the strike price of your call option is below your cost basis on your stock. All right. So now let's talk about the other side. Let's say we own Apple and we do have some cash in the account. Do you know where the bottom is? No, not necessarily. But I wouldn't mind using puts to buy some more. Now, you can apply this. I'm using Apple because almost everybody in the world owns some Apple, either in uh, the mutual funds that they own or in their 401ks. In some way, shape, or form, they probably own some Apple. But you, this can apply to any stock that you have, uh, 3M, Walmart, uh, Facebook. It, it doesn't necessarily matter, but a great way with the markets down where you got the, the fear of missing out, the FOMO, right, if you will, to use that term. We just had our first digital conference, and that, and that was in the title of our digital conference, Fear of missing out, FOMO. If the if I'm a little worried about that marketplace, I got a lot of cash on the sidelines. You can get some incredible premiums by selling puts way below the market and saying, "Okay, I have some free cash on hand. I still I don't think Apple's going to go bankrupt. So where can I pick a strike and sell some premium to uh, say, well, if Apple comes down to this level, I would be happy to buy more." Now, I want you to address it that way. Now, if I am doing this, I'm doing it with the intention of buying more or the whole strategy, you know, basically falls apart. Then you're just pure speculating. And if the market does come down, you might panic, buy it back. Option markets are wide. You close it out on the ask. And once again, you just add to your compound losses that have already occurred from the big downturn in the marketplace. So, for example... Uh, if I if I look at Apple and I'm just going to pull up, I'm just going to go out to, to the monthly April contract. That's way out in time, and I don't necessarily need mean that you need to go there. But the markets are closed, and I just want to be able to show you an example of how much premium there actually is in the marketplace right now. So if I look at Apple, Apple today closed at two forty six sixty seven. It was actually down. Six dollars and nineteen cents. If I go out thirty days in time, just because that would be something that you might sell if the markets were normal, you can look at the two twenty strike here, which is twenty six dollars and sixty seven cents below where Apple is trading, and the bid ask on that option contract. Once again, the markets are closed. Is eleven dollars by thirty. 1960. So let's say you bring in 12. 12 would be a, a, a feasible uh, fill. It wouldn't be, you know, it would, it would be, you're not quite at the, at the midpoint of that trade. So 12 bucks, if I'm looking at it, should be a, a solid number to receive. And you think about the price of the capital that you'd have to put up. If you're doing this truly cash secured, that would be $22,000 saying that you would buy the stock at 220. So $12 or $1,200 on $220 or $22,000, that's 5%. For just saying that you'll buy the stock 26 points lower than where Apple is currently trading. So if you think about that overall and you got free capital just sitting around doing nothing, the rates of return on these puts – by trying to guess where you might buy it. So it comes down to 220 and it goes lower, it goes to 210. Are you really sad that you bought some more at 220? I guess if that's all the capital you have in your account, you might. But if you do have some free cash, well, then this is an interesting way to make your cash work for you by selling put options on positions that you already have, but you wouldn't mind adding more on. So if you look at... Just the percentage decrease in Apple, uh, you're talking about a 10% decrease once again before you would actually even be put to buy that stock. And then on top of it, you get another $12 to go along with it. 
effectively buying the stock via the cash secured put at $208. So what the battle between selling covered calls on that Apple position versus selling a cash secured put, I think the cash secured put wins in this environment. Now, flip a coin. We're not, nothing here is meant to be a recommendation. And this is probably the most general conversation that I can have. I'm using Apple as a, as an example, but any stock that you have out there is going to have some volatility. And I got, I got to let you know that, by the way, we haven't even gone through an earnings season yet since the big downturn. In the middle of April is when all this stuff is going to start shaking out. And as a matter of fact, I would expect to see more volatility in the marketplace after the earnings come out than less. So I can I could definitely see the VIX breaking through that eighty uh, that eighty nine level that was set back in two thousand and eight. All right. Well, I'm getting a, a little bit long winded here, so I'm going to let that be that be the concept for today, uh, selling cash secured puts in this environment versus selling calls on stocks that you already have a loss on. I'm saying I'm declaring the cash secured put to be the victor of this battle. And that's where I would be focusing my mind power and my thoughts as opposed to pegging myself with a covered call and limiting my upside if we ever did get that v-shape recovery and that bounce back that's it for this episode of options playbook radio if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program you can send them directly to me at the options guy at invest.li.com thanks for listening we'll be back at the same time same place next week and until then may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out the Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.